So my name is Rob Van der I'm a principal consultant at SIG. I lead the security and privacy practice there. I also work with uh, the Dutch CIP, working on grip on secure software development. I'm an advisor to uh, ANISA, uh, advising on specifically uh, security certification, uh, IEEE on privacy in, uh, in software. And within OWASP, I'm working together with the uh, SAM team on the Agile nodes and also co-leaning the uh, integration project. And you might have seen me and my team at one of the uh, OWASP uh, AppSec events. This is in London, I believe, two, three years ago. Uh, we always have a booth there to uh, to meet you guys and to uh, do nice uh, competitions like the Code Cluedo. We're all about uh, code review, uh, static analysis, and code inspection, and uh, we'd like to uh, uh, share that with you. So. Let me start by some news, which is ironically also part of the problem that we're trying to solve with the integration project. The news is that the new baseline requirements for grip on secure software development uh, have been released, version three. And um, so, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the uh, grip on secure software development initiative, uh, it's an initiative from the CIP where we were also at the beginning. Um, its aim is to help software makers and clients to collaborate on software security. It has a little book called The Method that describes how you set requirements, how you manage your risks, how you do a verification, how you uh, sort of uh, establish together the right set of requirements uh, with, your, with your software maker. There's also a practitioner community, which is, I think, a large part of the success system integrators and mostly government organizations that work together on how to set the right requirements. Then there's also a publication called the baseline requirements, which lists a number of requirements based on the industry standards. And it's basically a, a short list, therefore baseline. So last week we released version three. Uh, I was the co-author of this. Uh, we released it in beta. And we transformed it from a randomly ordered checklist into a structured guide uh, using the ISO 25410 security model that we developed at the SIG as a structure. It provides much more logical structure to these requirements. And also, uh, we added many links to, uh, to resources at OWASP. So basically, the document has become an index on OWASP resources. And we did a lot of other improvements. Now, the funny thing is that this is part of the problem. There is a need for this document to create clarity in the world of security standards, and it introduces a new standard, basically. And this has happened a lot. Uh, if you look at one of the publications of the uh, ECSO, a publication about existing cybersecurity standards, it is more than 200 pages long. Many, many standards. And these are all well intended, but they create a puzzle, a puzzle for organizations, for procurement, for developers, for testers. Where should we look? Well, maybe you say you should look at OWASP, uh, but not everybody is really familiar with all the, the richness and the wealth of inf information that can be found in, uh, in, in OWASP. And in many situations, there are requirements that are applicable in a different way for which you need another publication, how do you find this? So this report, this long report, illustrates that the current standard and guideline landscape for software security is fragmented, complex, and confusing. And I'm sure you're recognizing this. Um, and if you're a standard maker, it's hard to develop and maintain a standard that is up to date, to keep it up to date, to align it with new insights. So what the result is, is that there's a large set of publications available, and there are many commonalities, but also many gaps, many many quality differences. And these in initiatives can really benefit from each other uh, if they would work together more. They could save work in development and maintenance, but also attain more consistency. And if you look at OWASP, it provides a bit of a puzzle as well. So this is, I don't know if Martin is, is still uh, in, uh, in the session. 
but uh, Martin Knopfloch uh, and I worked together on well, doing some research on, on the standard landscape. And the result of that is uh, this structure back then. It's it's probably outdated, but to a large extent, it's still up to date. It lists with the various uh, type of activities in the development uh, life cycle, uh, the many resources that are available in OWASP. And what is missing is something that links this together because these different publications, they are uh, describing the same things in a different way or they have not, are not yet up to date or there are inconsistencies. And a lot of work is being done. Uh, I know about uh, great work through uh, Elisat and through uh, Jeroen Willemse who are really working hard to align these publications more. But the problem is broader and also outside of the, the flagship projects and uh, also outside of OWASP. So this is what we are working on. It's time to harmonize. This is the front page of a soon to be released ANISA report that says requirements largely overlap, demonstrating that software security is mainly a generic problem and that both standard development organizations and European standard organizations or good practice producers are often working without proper coordination and effective liaisons. And as, as positive as we feel as participators in, in OWASP, there are so many standards and certifications out there uh, within different realms uh, that within these realms, for example, OWASP resources are, are hardly known. And uh, so the access to relevant resources that can really help organizations and teams is, uh, is troubled. Um, one of the recommendations in the report is uh, develop a common repository for shared security measures. And this allows aligning on requirement commonalities, so the overlap of requirements in these standards. Uh, and this prevents proliferation and fragmentation and also makes drafting and maintaining schemes, and security requirements, uh, more efficient in terms of mitigating the risks. Enter the OWASP Integration Standards Project that I'm leading together with Spios and Eli. The goal is to enable alignment between software security initiatives inside OWASP and outside. And we want to make development and maintenance of standards easier. And we want to attain a shared understanding of security details in the industry between developers, testers, and procurement. Linking things so they become more consistent, they become more uh, accessible, and there is less variation and less fragmentation. Um, deliverables are a repository that links stands on requirements, testing strategies, countermeasures, threats, weaknesses, all these things are linked together. Um, and some good work has been done uh, for this, as you, as you probably know, uh, by MITRE, listing uh, weaknesses, listing threats. At the level of security requirements, uh, there is no such entity. And this is what we're working on. Apart from this repository of requirement entities and related subjects, we also want to provide a standardization on the integration of the different OWASP projects, how they exchange data and how they fit into the big picture. Much like uh, the picture uh, that came out of the work by uh, Martin and me that I showed earlier. Um, So how does it work? The common requirement enumeration. Uh, here you see an example of four different resources, ASVS, MASVS, the you know, uh, Web Security Testing Guide, and a publication by NIST. They are linked by the fact that they talk about the same thing. They talk about uh, the generation of session tokens. Uh, so the CRE is basically, in essence, just an ID. It can be much more, uh, but in essence, it's just an ID, the ID that links these resources. And if you have this mapping, uh, you allow teams to find all the information they need on a topic. So if they are working on creating uh, um, uh, session IDs, uh, there's a lot to be found. 
and they can find it through this single idea instead of a long list of different resources that that talk about it or might talk about about it um, and if you have these these core uh, requirements, you can also create easily create lists that apply to certain situations. Uh, certain domains, certain types of applications can quickly put together a list of these requirements and therefore uh, uh, indirectly uh, set the right scope for, for development. So do you need to maintain this mapping? No. Recently, uh, a mapping was made of IoT standards in the UK, leading to a 900-page uh, uh, document uh, linking all these uh, all these uh, yeah, resources uh, about IoT security together. This is unmaintainable. The idea is that the common requirement in the enumeration ID is included in the resources themselves. So the ASVS mentioned it, mentions it, uh, the testing guide mentioned it, and NIST mentioned it. Um, what's in it for these resources? Well, you can add functionality based on this, uh, which is illustrated by this diagram. If you're looking at a resource, for example, you're looking on the web, on the mobile ASVS, you see some description there, but you also see a little button. If you click on it, you get the options to move to the different resources that are mapped to this. Now, this is the core functionality. It's quite simple. So politically, it's not simple. We need to get, of course, the buy-in and uh, uh, the, the inclusion of the good ideas of uh, organizations like ANISA, like NIST, uh, like uh, Etsy, and, uh, and you name them, uh, to get the buy-in for this. Because it starts with the idea, but it can be much more powerful when you, for example, uh, include um, uh, the wisdom from the community in this. For example, the links that are most clicked or most used, that data you can use uh, to, uh, well, to determine the order of resources, making sure that the most used or most interesting resource is shown first with this, uh, with this CRE. You can also use this repository of CRE ideas as a basis to, uh, well, to collect um, exchange of ideas through a forum or comments that are linked to this uh, CRE, creating sort of a centralized knowledge base and gathering of insights uh, at a central place, binding together all these, these different initiatives into, uh, into one spot. So this is what we're working on current uh, phase is that we're doing this for, uh, uh, we're starting to implement this for uh, the flagship uh, project, thanks to the great work of, uh, of Ellie and, and the other people on the team, and exploring further how we can uh, yeah, grow this initiative, also functionality-wise, and at the same time, reaching out to the uh, standardization organizations in Europe and outside Europe uh, to see if we can collaborate on this. And that about sums it up. Thanks for listening. I hope you find it interesting. And I really would love to see if there are any, uh, any questions. Well, looking at the YouTube channel, at least there, there are no questions posed, but I do have one. Um, kind of similar question as what I was asking uh, Ricardo and Glenn. Um, in what way do you look for people to come and help you with this project? It sounds like something that you, Eli and Spiros, are um, working hard on amongst yourselves. But how, what kind of participation from the public are you looking for? We're looking for participation. Uh, the team uh, should grow, needs to grow. And we're looking for people who really are motivated. We have a passion for this goal, you know, making an end to putting an end to the fragmentation. Um, and this requires passion, but it also requires uh, insight into application security, of course, because we need to make sense of all these things. Uh, good links 
with uh, people who are uh, uh, representing initiatives. So if you're involved in, in Etsy or in NEN, you have good connections there, or in NISA or NISTS, uh, please join. Even if you have suggestions, please drop a message. We're welcome to this because it's it's quite a complex undertaking, but it's necessary. And the cool thing about it is that it can put OWASP uh, more on the map as the independent, you know, open community driven uh, initiative uh, to make things clearer for everybody. Now, the interesting thing from my perspective is that OWASP has uh, long made various kinds of lists themselves, and we are making yet more lists. Um, this is only human. <laughs> yes. Um, and a, a good thing, because uh, some lists, they, well, they uh, die a slow death or... Well, let's not, let's not call it death. Let's call it a very long sleep. Death sounds too dark. Uh, and rightfully so sometimes. Uh, but others grow into great initiatives. So one should try. But also, also I think that one should uh, be willing to uh, consolidate or give up. Um, and uh, you see this happening also in, in, in OWASP. Some project starts and then they end. Uh, and some projects start and then they grow into something great for a specific uh, part of what uh, what OWASP offers. Um, also going, well, I, I looked on the website and it says that you are uh, planning to have uh, something ready to go uh, in the third quarter of this year. Um, I'm just wondering... Um, what so the deliverable is like the mapping that you are trying to achieve and am i summarizing that correctly yes and the, the mapping is created by uh the different projects uh adopting the CRE and including it in their work this implicitly creates the mapping and also maintains the mapping um so quarter 3 is uh, is the plan we are depending on progress of, could you call it the lobby? Yes, let's call it the lobby to work with the, the different standard organizations. It's a highly political environment, um, sometimes slow decision making, but we need them on board and we need their ideas and we need things to align with how they want it. It needs to remain open, of course. But everybody will have their ideas. We need to bring them together. And this perhaps could require some waiting and might delay our, our progress, but it's necessary. Then I only have one more question, and that is I know of the uh, Mitra attack uh, thing, um, mm -hmm. which is also a giant set of possible attacks and uh, presumably mitigations against those attacks. Um, do you see... Uh, overlap integration opportunities, etc. With that, definitely, these will be the first links that we create. Yes. So if you if you look at uh, the slides that I presented, I think that uh, a next iteration uh, of those of this slide deck would be that I put in uh, for illustration a uh, a KPAC or a CWE entry here mm. because they're very useful and the link more. Uh, through other mitigation strategies, etc. Um, but this, we feel that this is the uh, sort of the, the entity layer, uh, the, the the concept that is missing in the picture that is is, is binding these things. Uh, and uh, we don't want to recreate anything that uh, Mitre has been creating. They have been working on an initiative uh, that was also with an acronym CRE. It was something different. Uh, the first reach out I will do is uh to uh to mitre um okay that's also all the questions i have um if people want to reach out to see to you uh, where do they go um rob fenifer on twitter uh and i will uh i will basically type in my email address in the chat perfect um then all I can say is thank you very much, Rob, for your presentation.